Bernardo depositions have been moved to Thursday. Good. Banks that needs you to file the discovery briefs in Hemelstein. Fine. And your fiance wants to know if you signed off on the newest draft of the vows. Yes. No. Well, whatever she wants. Oh, great. Uh, you got the continuance in Petramco Oil. Mark says we'll have to redraft the Olson petition for jurisdictional issues, and the caterers suggest adding a seafood station to the buffet. What kind of seafood? Shellfish, I believe. They can circulate more canapes. No, no, it's, it's, it's fine. Tell David it's only a reply brief, have Pickering handle the Trampo deposition, and uh, find that Oklahoma precedent in Hamilton. Right. Yeah. Oh, and call that furniture guy and tell him my desktop is supposed to be in Burl, not Onyx. Burl. Antique Burl, with a satin finish. Got it. Charlie, this is unbelievable. Wow, this place is big enough to drive a car around in, huh? <laughs> nice. Woo! Boy, look at this view. Yeah, I know. Wow. Uh, look at this. What do you got here? Yeah, but that's not mine. Oh, I see. <laughs> hey! Oh, yeah. yeah, there they go. Man, when did you get in here? A couple days ago. Wow. Well, what, was it a wedding present? It, no. They made me partner. That's great. Yeah. That's even better, yeah. huh? Thank yeah. you very much. Oh, you got the big desk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There. Why don't you, uh... Oh, well, a... yes, of course, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> and another thing, Higgins. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> I had a pretty good audition, too. Some big agents. They really liked me, Charlie. You didn't do your mafia thing. This is one of my favorite scenes from Blood and Family. because I needed to talk to you. Because I love her. And I'm not so sure that you can understand that. <laughs> so that's the way it's gonna be, huh? You're gonna put Mo on me and Sal on me. Yeah, well, come on. Give it to me, Mo. Sal, come on. You guys are good at that, huh? Huh? Come on! Oh, yeah! Why shouldn't I do the mafia thing? You should. Charlie. You sure? It's good. I love that, Tony. It's good. Rick, Tiffany's gonna be here any second for lunch. I really don't... Well, I wanna go over the bachelor party. What? The bachelor party. Oh, Official right. duties of the best man. Oh, yeah. this thing is hilarious. Now, I have to provide you with shelter, and I have to meet your emotional needs leading up to the nuptials. Hello, Ricky. Well, hello, Tiffany. Well, I gotta say, you are already looking... Uh, and with so few days to go, I think you're peaking at just the right moment. Thank you. Well, is it too soon to kiss the bride? Hmm? Yeah, I, I, we should wait. Yeah. Charles. Yeah. If you don't decide in a boutonniere right now, they're not going to be able to make them up in time. Mm -hmm. And that means they're not going to be any boutonnieres at the wedding. Mm -hmm. And that means I'm going to relate to you in a way that Dr. Pearlstein told us to avoid. Right, right. I don't want that. <laughs> Could we, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. You want some privacy? Yeah, you... Go ahead. I'm really very worried about this, Charles. Darling, no, no. I have known Richard since I was nine years old, okay? Now, he may not be the most tactful guy in the world, but he's decent and he's really and he's not going to do anything to ruin the most important day of our lives. <sighs> but, okay, okay, he may, he may not be totally reliable, but he is thoughtful. Well, he can be thoughtful. Look, he's my oldest friend in the world, and I really want him to be my best man. My father hates him. Hey, I'll deal with your father. Charles! Yes, sir. Hi, Daddy. Follow me. Yes, sir, right away. Go get him. Paradise Bluff? Excuse me, sir? I need you there by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. And, and where is that exactly? Nevada. Some pathetic little cow town. My wife's cousin got indicted for fraud. The guy's a creep. 
Landon's got this family thing. So what, you, you want me to defend him, sir? No, Tuttle, a continuance. He'll be in and out of court in five minutes. Well, uh, what with the wedding and all, sir? I mean, you know, there's the caterer, there's the band, there's the boutonnieres. There's... Screw the boutonnieres. I need this to go away. It's a family matter, and you're family now. Listen, Ricky, I, I hate to tell you this, but something's come up. I really can't do that bachelor party now. What? I gotta go out of town tonight. It's a business thing. Where? Paradise Bluff, Nevada. <sighs> The bachelor party's tonight. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying, Ricky. We can't do the bachelor oh, party. Oh, Charlie. I know. Come on. I planned a whole... a whole bachelor party. We'll do something after the honeymoon. No, that's not the same. Look, do you want me to throw you a party? Sure I do. Really? Yes. Because I need to know that. Yeah, I don't no, know what's no, going no, on I, I, Yes, please. Throw All me right. a party. Okay, I gotta go. these guys for my acting class <laughs> please I can't. come on we drove halfway across the desert we had to drive like hell to beat you here <laughs> come on charlie if it weren't for me all you'd ever do is work one drink one drink one drink one drink come on one drink one drink We'll have a picture of Bear B-52s all around. There you go. Oh, I'll have a shivers, please. Come on, shivers. Yeah, shivers. Yeah, uh, what the heck? I'm gonna have one too. Everybody have one. Huh? Oh. We're out of shivers. What? We're out of shivers. You're out. You're a bar. <laughs> How about a Manhattan? Yeah, sure. All right. Do you want a Manhattan or a paradise Manhattan? Whoa, I like the sound of that. Give my friend a paradise Manhattan. And shots and sets for the rest of you? Yes, please. please. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey, Jim, do you know how to make a Manhattan? No. <sighs> this is great. This might be the best Manhattan I have ever had. You know what it is? I, no, I'll tell you, it's unusual. That's that's what we should get some more of these. Do you want another one? I think we can. All right, you know, all right. Another one. <laughs> Real soon. <laughs> Party's on. Huh? There we go. Party. I said bullshit. You either testify or I'm going to drag your ass into court with a subpoena. I'll take care of this. I say that doesn't make me look like some kind of jerk just trying to pick up on you. You know what I miss? TV. I was lying on a sofa with someone watching TV. Popcorn, blanket. But sometimes I think that intercourse is overrated. You know? Because I'm a, I'm a hugger. <laughs> I could hug, I could kiss all day long. This isn't quite it. It's, it's good, though. Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe a little sweeter. Yeah! Woo! That box! That's my slot machine. Hey, no one was playing this track off. I was. I just went to take a piss. Wait, hey, whoa, whoa. Whoa, hey, easy, easy. Let me, maybe I could be some help here, pal. Pal, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but the law is on his side. Prior use of the machine 
is not determinative of possessory interest. Are you a lawyer? Yes. <laughs> Did you see that? It's aggravated assault! That's four years in the state pit! <laughs> Charlie, I'm so sorry, man. Yeah, don't forget. This doctor said give him one of these every three hours. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna forget. Hey, we gotta go. Yeah, okay. All right, well, you guys take it easy. Drink a lot of coffee. See you later, man. Yeah. Court tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's just a continuance. I know it's just a continuance, but the doctor said, come on, Charlie, will you lay back? Uh... Now, look, we'll see how you're feeling tomorrow morning, all right? Remember, you got to take three of these every three hours. Right? Mm. OK. Mm. Give me them there. Mm. And I set the alarm for you. Charlie. Charlie, how are you feeling, man? It's almost nine. Don Fernando has many cattle. What? Are these all the women of your tribe? Buddy? Charlie, we're here. Look, you can't work today. No, I should be. I can't. I can't. I, I, I sh you should. I sh you should. You should. You should. You should. You should do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Look, why don't I just go and explain? Yeah. No. 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 Right. no. What? Whitfield. No. No. Whitfield. What? Whitfield. I can't. I can't do Whitfield. But the bar fight. I know. This I is know. my whole life. Okay. My okay. career. Oh. Rehearse it again, huh? Say it with me. Your honor. My honor. Your honor. My honor. My client. Your client. My client. My client. Your honor, my client requests. I am my honor, you quest. Taking my case. Why don't we sit down? Okay. Yeah. Kit Kat? Uh, no, no, thank you. It's chocolate. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> what are my chances? Uh, well, uh, I, uh, uh, they're good. They're excellent. You done many of these? Uh, well, I'm just filling in for today. Yeah, we're going to get you, uh, an expert in your particular area of crime for the actual trial. Mr. Tuttle. Psst. Mr. Tuttle, are you ready to proceed? Uh, yes, sir. I'm ready to proceed. Go ahead. So proceed, proceed. Right, yeah, of course. Your Honor, my client requests a continuance. OK with me, OK with you, Counselor. Uh, no, Your Honor. No more delays, please. Eight counts of fraud in the last 10 years. Mr. Gibbs has yet to spend one night in jail. He hires these big city lawyers who think they can waltz in here and play games. Your Honor, the people come here today prepared for trial. All right, then. Request is denied. 
We'll go ahead as planned. Jury selection begins at 2 o'clock. Well, if it isn't the hugger. You what? How could you do that? Well, what was I supposed to do? You were passed out on the floor? You said you were me. It was just one lie. <gasps> It was a walk-on, Charlie. Oh, God. Do you know what this means? Do you know what you've done? You were lying there, man. I was trying to cover your ass. <gasps> Why don't you just go and explain? Why to explain what? That I, that I was in a bar fight and that you represented a client of the firm's in a court of law? In, in, in front of a judge? What are you? That's a felony, Richard. That's, no, no, that's, that's, that's one, two, three, that's four. That's four felonies. That's fraud. That's conspiracy to commit fraud. That's obstruction of justice. What? Hey, can, can we get some water here? Hey, you okay? No, he needs some water. No, he needs a paper bag. Lloyd, give me a paper bag. Sorry. Charlie, relax. Calm down, sweetie. Breathe, breathe. Okay, just calm down. Everything's okay. Here you go. Just calm okay. down. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Just breathe. Calm down. In and out. In and out. Just breathe. Oh. There you go. There you go. Oh. That's it, sweetie. Just breathe. Oh. Feel better? Oh. Good. Oh, thank you. No problem. But it's decaf from now on, okay? <sighs> Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Boy, that Manhattan must have really worked. I'm the waitress at the hotel. Oh. Remember? Yeah. So what's your name? Richard. Yeah, his name is Richard. It's Richard Rietti. Richard Rietti? Yeah. Nice name. I'm Billy. Billy Tyler. Oh. Feel better, okay? Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're just lying in general now? No, no, that's it, Charlie. I said I was you, now you get to be me. You're Richard Rietti, another lawyer. You come with me to court, we'll straighten this whole thing out. <laughs> I gotta be you? It's a special assignment, very hush-hush, but I'm leaving you in good hands. My associate here is also our expert in deceit. Fraud! Too. Are you ready to proceed with jury selection? We are. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, Mrs. Sussex, correct? Yes. Mrs. Sussex, uh, have you ever purchased any items by mail? Mr. Tuttle? Who's he? I have only you listed on defense. Uh, he's my associate, Your Honor, Richard Rietti. Richard Rietti? I have no pro hoc BJ petition for a Richard Rietti. Oh? Your Honor, may I approach? Why don't you? And bring your bar card, Mr. Rietti. Now, Mr. Rietti. Uh, Mr. Your Honor, I wasn't aware that an assistant needed a bar card. Assistant? You said associate. Uh, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Associate. Oh. Well, the lady says associate. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, Your Honor. I, I misspoke. Why is his assistant voir during the jury, Your Honor? Hmm. Sit down, Mr. Rietti. Your Honor. Sit down, Mr. Rietti. Proceed, Mr. Tuttle. Uh, so Mrs. Sussex, wasn't it? Mm. Yes, okay, Mrs. Sussex. Uh, uh, state your name, please. Virginia Sussex. A little louder, please. And remember that you're under oath. I am. Mr. Tuttle. Well, let's just say that you're in a court of law. Virginia Sussex. Good. Good. Very good. OK, uh, Mrs. Sussex, uh, Virginia. Uh, and what qualifications do you feel you have for jury duty? 
<laughs> Cracker Jack. She thinks she's up against Tweedledum and Tweedledee. You throw them off balance, and then kapow. So, what's our kapow? You want to share our uh, kapow with our client? Everything's under control, Mr. Gibbs. Why don't you uh, why don't you go get a cup of coffee? Yeah. See you back here in say half an hour. Okay, excellent. We're in good shape here. Just kidding, right? We're not really in good shape. Because they think that I'm the lawyer now. And that means I have to keep being the lawyer? Mm -hmm. Well, how the heck am I going to keep being the lawyer? Excuse me. Mr. Tuttle and his assistant are here to see you. Uh, tell them I... Send them in. Thank you. If you're here for a plea bargain, you can forget it. Well, don't be so hasty, Miss Gardner. Here is how. Mr. Tuttle, I almost forgot. Didn't you have to call your office? My office? Mm -hmm. Call my office? Oh, God, yes. Oh, no. Uh, Miss Gardner, can I use your phone? Yeah, Irene. Bri Richard, I have to take this. Uh, you and Miss Gardner can handle the Gibbs matter, right? Yeah, Irene, tell the guy at Ford, if I don't have the retainer by Friday, I'm representing Chrysler and we'll see them in court. Miss Gardner, uh, Mr. Tuttle realizes, as I'm sure you do, that the case could drag on for days, weeks even. Excuse me. You were the one that was practicing law without a license, weren't you? I'm as familiar with this case as Mr. Tuttle is. Uh, that's true. I'm just filling in for a sick colleague back at the firm. Yeah, Irene, send a muffin basket to Jacoby at Cedar sinai Oh, I don't know, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. Oh, I'm still. Yeah, he's Jacoby's assistant. He knows the case. Uh, you two go ahead. Yeah, work it out. Yeah. What is your offer, Mr. Tuttle? I have a meeting in ten minutes. Uh, hold my calls, Irene. Well, we want to be fair. Fair. And what do you think is fair for a man who's been preying on the sick and the elderly and the poor all his life? Well. Six years. The maximum's five. <laughs> I know that. You asked me what I thought would be fair. If my client were guilty, which he isn't, but if he was. Bottom line, uh, six weeks. Though I'm pretty open at this point. <laughs> oh, I, I really hate this stuff, don't you? I mean, you're on one side, I'm on another. Can't we get around this law thing? Huh? You're touching me. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. See, that's what I'm talking about. There's this barrier. We can't even have human contact. I mean, can't we work this out like two very mature adults? You tell me. What would you like to see happen here? Hmm? I would like to see you turn and walk out of my office. Hundreds upon hundreds of unsuspecting consumers paid $17.99 for a copper engraving of the great emancipator, Abraham Lincoln. For their $17.99, plus taxes, plus shipping and handling, this, ladies and gentlemen, is what they got. A penny. Now, common sense and the laws of the state of Nevada will tell you this is fraud. And the people will prove that that man, Benny Gibbs, is a master at it. Mr. Whitfield, sir, I'm coming home. Well, because it's gone straight to trial and I'm getting married on Sunday. You know, maybe you can get somebody else to, what, uh, what defend him? No, sir, it's not that easy. He, he doesn't appear to have the highest level of, uh, well, uh, innocence. No, neither do the rest of our clients. I understand that. I just... Yes, that is why I went to law school. I... No, I'm, I am not. I am not scared of a chicken shit little trial. I'm... He hung up. He hung up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
you know, you plan, you work, you build, and then whammo. One moment, one tiny moment, one split second of indiscretion. God, this is all my fault. Oh, shit. Why is this my fault? I was trying to help. Pull over again. Hey, listen. Uh, how about you just write me some lines? Oh. You tell me what to say, I'll play the shit out of it. Three years of law school, two years of clerking for a federal judge. You think you can fake that? Yeah, you remember when I did Inherit the Wind? At that uh. church at Cerritos? He who inherits the dust shall inherit. Oh, man, how's that line go again? He who inherits. Oh, come on, Charlie. I promise, we'll figure something out. It's not just something, Ricky. It's a defense. You think you can figure out a whole defense? mistaken identity. We find the real defrauder. He is the real defrauder. Right. Damn. Howdy, ma'am. OK. OK, how about this? Immunity. We structure a deal wherein Gibbs will work with the feds. He'll use his inside knowledge to expose other con men throughout the nation. Wherein? Did you actually say wherein? No, what do you think? Immunity. I think it is the most staggeringly idiotic idea I have ever heard in my whole life. I can't talk to you anymore. Charlie, that's it. What? That's our defense. A Twinkie? It's right here, Charlie. People versus White, 1981. They argued temporary insanity because Dan White was eating Twinkies the day he killed those guys. Get a sugar high. That was different. Dan White committed a single act of violence in a fit of rage. Our client has been systematically bilking people for over 40 years. So? So, it's not the same thing. No one gets a sugar high and commits mail fraud. Hey, this shit is cumulative. It builds up in your system. Let's say you eat two of these things a day for 40 years. Where's all that sugar gonna go? It's stored in your fat cells, man. It gets released. Drip, drip, drip. You're like a morphine addict. Richard? All right, just follow me a minute here. Benjamin Gibbs is a junkie. He's chemically dependent. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Benjamin Gibbs is a victim. Oh, here we go. No, 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 no. He's a victim. He's held hostage by all the junk food corporations of America, enduring years of torment in snack food hell. I want to kill myself. All right. All right, what else have we got? We lose. So what if we lose? It doesn't have to work, Charlie. It just has to be a defense. What if we lose? You want them? So all these people are experts? In varying degrees. Sometimes if they don't agree with us. Oh, trust me, if we pay them, they'll agree with us. Have you taken a look at the opening statement yet? Mm -hmm. It's locked in. Really? Your Honor, and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, fraud involves deliberate deception or trickery. Now, what does that mean? Well, simply that the prosecutor must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that my client, Benjamin Gibbs, intended to commit the crimes of which he's been accused. But over the next few days, the defense will prove conclusively that Mr. Gibbs never acted with intention because of one indisputable fact. Mr. Gibbs does not have the capacity to tell right from wrong. And through the testimony of a nationally renowned psychiatric expert, we will show that Mr. Gibbs was, in fact, incapable of normal, rational thought. And ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it's up to you to see that justice is done. Justice. You know, whenever I step into a courtroom, I... Think of something a great law professor of mine once said. 
But that can wait for tomorrow. The important thing to remember is that that man over there, Benjamin Matthew Gibbs, is insane. Insanity. Terrific. Yeah, a little improv, but most of it was totally yours, and they ate it up. No more ad libs, Ricky. I mean it. OK, fine. So when's our expert coming? Tomorrow after court. Assuming we survive court. Look at that, Charlie. It's like a train going by. Black coffee? Hang on, Tiff. Yes, please. Thank you. So, what do you do anyway? You bookies? You eat like bookies. I'm... He's a lawyer. Oh, so what do you do? I am an actor. Wow. That is like the greatest job in the whole world. I mean, just to be able to change yourself like that. You must feel so free. You have to sign that. Cool. Oh. Right. <laughs> I think I'll save this. It might be worth something one day. You know, folks, at the heart of every trial is a performance. And the heart of every performance is the truth. When you walk into the courtroom, you're the actor, you're the director, you're the producer. And if it's going to be a great performance, it was him. He's the man. We bought 10 of them. Irma? That's my financial whiz of a wife. She said they'd go up in value. Same as the Bradford Exchange plates. Invest now. $200, she says. Objection, Your Honor. That's hearsay. Sustained. Did you go into your savings? Into your nest egg? Uh, objection, Your Honor. She's leading the witness. Objection is sustained. Mr. Crabbit, how much money did you send Mr. Gibbs? Over $200. And what did you get for your $200? 10 cents. Mm. Nothing further. Your witness. So the defense has no questions at this time? You are excused. <clears throat> this, this is all I got. Witness. Does the defense wish to cross-examine? No. Now, what the hell is going on here? Want to ask anything? He's right. I look like an idiot. Give me a couple of questions. No. You wish to cross-examine, Mr. Tuttle? Uh, yes, I do, Your Honor. Just a couple of questions. Hello, Mr. Norman. Can I call you Buck? Uh, Mr. Norman, um, what was your impression of Ben Gibbs when you first met him? I, I never met him. Oh? Thank you. And if you had, would you have bought anything from him? No. No, is that because he looks crazy? No. What, you're saying that he doesn't look crazy? No. Right! You can't say he doesn't look crazy, can you, Mr. Norman? Objection! Sustained. <laughs> Don't you ever, and I mean ever, pull a stunt like that again! What are you talking about? He was contradicting himself on the stand. I was this far from destroying him. It made no sense. Jerry Spence says a trial attorney must construct his own reality. Jerry Spence? Charlie, the jury loved it. You're crazy. Nobody in a real courtroom falls for that kind of melodramatic garbage. Hey, man, nice work in there. 
Oh, we better go. We got a three o'clock with our client. So, how do you want me to play it with a shrink? Just be yourself. All he wants to know is whether you can tell right from wrong. Well, hey, why don't you put me on the stand? I can sell the jury anything you want. Yeah, that's a very interesting approach, Ben. Could we confer for a moment? Mr. Gibbs, excuse us for just a second. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? Now you're encouraging my client to perjure himself? I did not. Oh, great, there is no way that I'm putting Gibbs on the stand. Charlie, I know this guy. He's got talent. I mean, if I work with him a little, maybe he really didn't have any criminal intent. No, no criminal intent? What are you, a goddamn expert on the penal code? You're an actor. Come on, he is a crook. He's a crook. Hello? I'm Dr. Brown. You're joking. He's a kid. He has a degree in counseling. He's not even a real doctor. Look, I had a day to find somebody and get him up here to Paradise Bluff, Nevada. Wouldn't you feel a little bit bad if Gibbs went to jail? No, I wouldn't. He's been swindling people for years. You could at least get him a real psychiatrist. Listen to me. Dr. Brown says his piece, then we close and get out of here. But you saw that guy. He's walking around with a Melvin and a huge zit on his nose. I can't win with that. Can't win? Wait, 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 wait. Did you, did you just say you can't win? Can't look loyally. We don't want to win, Richard. This isn't about winning. This is about not getting lynched. What the hell is this? Jerry Spence has never lost a case, Charlie. Never. You think that's all there is to it? You think you put on a jacket and that makes you a lawyer? It's not the whole character. It's just a window into what I'm working not on. Not a here. character. It's not a role. It's it's me. It's my career. It is years and years and years and years and years of hard work. You're very upset right now. Upset? Let me tell you something. If you screw this up, Richard, you won't just get a bad review. You'll ruin my career. Just get a bad review? These things hurt. This is my life, Richard. I am a member of the bar in three states. I was the associate editor of the Law Review. I don't pose. I don't preen. I don't put perjured testimony on the stand. I don't make a mockery of the American legal system. Well, you got your style, I got mine. No, you got nothing. You've got nothing. Oh. You've got a SAG card and a rent control department in Santa Monica. That's what you've got. You're in over your head, Richard. You don't have the equipment for this. Oh, I don't have the equipment for this. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Forget it. Now, what does that mean, I don't have the equipment? Fine. Where are you going? You'll see. Jackie. Hi, it's me, Richard. Listen, hon, I need you to do me a really big favor. Come in. Hi. Oh. This is for you. Thank you. Egg salad sandwich, cider potato salad, pot of coffee, and six aspirin. Don't you get stomach trouble? That's really my business. Right, you are. Well, have a nice dinner. This isn't what I ordered. Egg salad sandwich and a side of pea salad. No, I, I asked for wheat, not rye. I wanted mustard instead of mayo. I wanted one leaf of lettuce, and I never even mentioned cheese. Oh, well, it's Yolsburg. So? So it's good. I don't care. <laughs> well, that seems kind of like the point, doesn't it? Listen, OK? I distinctly ordered. I know. I put the cheese on myself. Just try it. If you don't like it, I'll Listen to me. I like my egg salad on wheat. I like it with mustard, not mayo. I like it with one leaf of lettuce. I. Pretty good, huh? That's because of the cheese. You want me to go and get you one the way you like it? No. Great. In the course of the interview, I noted a marked tendency toward paraschizophrenic behavior. And no, I do not feel Mr. Gibbs can distinguish between right and wrong. Thank you. Your witness. Dr. Brown, how old are you? 
Objection, irrelevant. Sustained. Okay. Let me put it this way. Where were you when Kennedy was shot? Objection. Fine. Withdrawn. Dr. Brown, what exactly is wrong with Benny Gibbs? He has an associative form of reality-based psychosis. Ah, thank you for clearing that up. Could you tell the court, please, what studies you've done? Papers you've published, lectures you've given on this disorder? Per se? None, per se. Then how many not per se? Not per se? That would be none also. Thank you. Nothing further. Thanks, Counselor. Great witness. Mm -hmm. Does the defense wish to redirect? No, Your Honor. Dr. Brown, you are excused. Does the defense wish to rest? Uh, no, sir. Uh, Your Honor, if we could have a short recess. A witness has just arrived who really can clear up the question of Mr. Gibbs' sanity, his personal physician. What the hell are you doing? Perjury. This is perjury. You can't go in there and put on perjury. What perjury? Gibbs just hired her. She's a licensed physician. Mr. Tuttle, court is reconvening, sir. Licensed from where? From where is she licensed? I hold advanced degrees from the Mind Body Institute in the Philippines and the Cretona Healing Center in Taiwan, where I studied with Dr. Chow Lee. I see. And have you published any articles or given any lectures on biochemistry? Oh, yes. I lecture on my books. May I? It's a series. Refined sugar and you. Fatty foods and you. And pesticides and you. I'd like these items entered as defense exhibits A through C. Furthermore, Your Honor, the witness has brought in some sample items from Mr. Gibbs's pantry in this bag. May I have them collectively entered as defense exhibit D? Any objection? Uh, Ms. Thoreau, uh, tell us about this food. May I stand? Sure. Now, looking at his diet, you see various red meats, uh, saturated fats, sugar, chocolate. Look at all this chocolate. Mm. And did you examine Mr. Gibbs this afternoon? Yes. After administering a standard glucose tolerance test, I found that his blood sugar levels were abnormally high. Go ahead, Ms. Thoreau. Why don't you explain? As you can see, the chemical composition for table sugar is C12H22O11. That's how Mr. Gibbs' brain reads the sugar puffs, the chewy bears, and the jelly beans. Now look at cocaine. C17H21NO4. Well, give or take a nitrogen. This man's on drugs. So, in your expert opinion, it would be safe to say that you are what you eat. Objection! You can't object! Recess! The defense calls for a recess! Get him out of here! No! 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 Ask, ask for a recess. Ask for... Ask! Uh, your ask, Honor! Ask, ask, proceed! Ask, Mr. Tuttle, please! What? Your Honor, I am... I, am, I apologize. Please, let, let me... Let me back in! Let me back in! Your witness. Exactly how long have you been Mr. Gibbs' doctor? Objection! Leading overruled. Beg? No. How long have you been treating Mr. Gibbs? Not long. How long? I started today. Doesn't this chart show that the difference between the chemical formula for sugar and the chemical formula for cocaine is five carbon atoms, one hydrogen atom, seven oxygen atoms, and one nitrogen atom? Sure, but that's virtually nothing. I mean... How big is an atom? Mr. Ryan, you must have an amazing talent. Can you bend spoons, too? <laughs> Argumentative. Argumentative? Sustained. 
Miss Rowe, you have been treating Mr. Gibbs for less than a day. Ashton answered. What? What? Nothing. So, Miss Rowe, how long do these diagnoses of yours generally take? Not long. Take you. The whites of your eyes are tinged yellow. You had alcohol last night, didn't you? Not just one glass. Okay, that's fine. The Thank tight, you. dry skin and dark circles scream circulation. You need to irrigate, Miss Gardner. Cut out those three to four cups of coffee. They constrict the vessels. Thank you. I'd say your cholesterol is around 280, your blood pressure around 150 over 105. Your Honor. I guess the PMS hits you really hard. Your Honor. Miss Tarot. Good colonic would flush out most of those poisons. Miss Tarot, limit your answers to the questions asked. I am. No, 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 no. Counsel asked you how long diagnosis takes. I pegged her in 38 seconds. You didn't peg anybody. That's badgering. Quiet. Quiet. Nobody breathe. I will have order in my courtroom. Mr. Rietti? The defense rests! The defense rests! Mr. Rietti, you are in contempt of court. The defense rests! The defense rests! Get out, Mr. Rietti! And if I ever again see you within 100 yards of this courthouse, you are history, bailiff! The defense rests! The defense rests! The defense rests! Mr. Tuttle, proceed. Uh, in light of the circumstances, sir, uh, perhaps a short time out? No! No! Clean it up! Sweep the floor! We are going to proceed! I don't care if the whole roof comes down! 98, 99, 100. You see that? No further. Richard? What happened? I fell. Far. Oh. oh, you're bleeding. Just pinch your nose right below the bridge. It cuts out the capillaries. Oh, come on. Let me take care of that. Come on. There you go. Nope, this way. There you go. You OK? Oh, yeah. Uh. Here, use this.
live here? Can't beat the rent. Come on. It blew out up on the highway and it nearly spun out, so I bailed out onto this little dirt road to keep from flipping over, and this is where I ended up. You just stayed here? Haven't budged in a couple of years. You're bleeding again. I'm gonna get you a towel, okay? Did you study nutrition in an accredited college? No. Science? Medicine? No. Dr. Tarot. May I call you doctor? <laughs> I was on my way to Berkeley when the tire blew out. I was going to get a master's in astronomy. I'd rather look at stars. <laughs> I, don't understand. I don't understand. You didn't go to grad school because you got a flat tire? Yep, here, drink this fast. Uh, no, I, I got to go. I, I got to go. Richard, where to? Well, I... I think I know just what you need. Okay. What are you doing? You'll see the porcelain's fantastic. Uh, 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 be careful with that. Relax. I do this all the time. It's like a meditation. Ooh, I tanked it! You want to hit the bowl dead center. Here, try. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't believe in guns, you know. I don't even like to, you know, be around them. Well, you must have to if you're an actor. I mean, you must have done shootouts and things. Well, I'm not that kind of actor. Well, what kind are you? Well, I... I don't know. I'm... Well, what was the last thing you played? A lawyer. Oh, like your friend. No, God, no, no, nothing like him. <laughs> no, this lawyer was, uh, stable. Stable? Yeah, stable, respectable. Ah. Very respectable. <laughs> he had everything. 37th floor office, boss's daughter, a future, big, bright future. Should have seen a ring. Four carat center stone. Stemware. Flatware. Service for 12. Their engagement photo was in town and country magazine. Story. That's right. A love story.
There you are, Charlie. It's worrying about you, man. This is Randy. Drummer. Lived with Billy for a while. Oh, you're with the waitress. Ricky, have you ever wondered where everything ends up? What? Like toilets, or tires, or auto parts, you know? Sometimes it only takes one little thing to push us in one direction or another. Uh-huh. What are you talking about? It's my kindergarten teacher. I was four. She said I was too advanced for my class, and so they skipped me a grade. I didn't want to be skipped, but everybody acted like I was so special, and pretty soon I was working even harder to get skipped all over again. And that, my friend, is how you end up in the junkyard. Okay, okay, sit down. It's a chain reaction. First valedictorian, then Yale, then Yale Law, then the clerking in the Ninth Circuit. Then it's the right firm. Gotta have the right firm. Charlie. Then it's flatware and crystal and an organdy china pattern. <laughs> Charlie? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, what? Because tomorrow she's gonna shove a rebuttal witness up my ass, and I don't know if I'm allowed to cross-examine outside the scope of direct examination. Depends. Yeah. It's Tiffany. I can't talk to her. Why not? Hi, hon. Charles, we've got a disaster. The Christoffel Oasis flatware has been discontinued. Everybody's calling my mother and she's sending them to Orgel's. I mean, Jesus! We're gonna end up with a hundred freaking ice buckets! Charles, I know you have to work this week, but I feel very isolated and unsupported having to go through this whole present thing by myself. Charles, you there? Charles? Charles, are you smiling? No, no, I'm not smiling. Well, you sound like you're smiling. Tiff, I gotta go. What? I'll call you later. <sighs> what was your question? Charlie, I need you. You gotta concentrate. You give up now, we're all going to jail! I'm banned from court. What do you want me to do? Ms. Gardner. Yes, Your Honor. Are the people prepared to go forward with their rebuttal witness? We are, Your Honor. Bailiff, bring in the jury. German Stone, S-T-O-N-E. I'm currently head of the Utah State Institute for Psychiatric Studies. Dr. Stone, you wrote a bestseller on the insanity defense, did you not? In which you characterized this defense as misleading and unhealthy. Objection. Objection. Leading. Sustained. Sustained. Dr. Stone, what was the thesis of your book? In a nutshell, it's that the insanity defense is frequently abused and rarely relevant. I see. Can we object to that? Dr. Stone, would you clarify what you mean by frequently abused and rarely? degrees from the Stanford University School of Medicine and the University of South Carolina. Charlie, are we going to object to any of this stuff? Oh, thank you. This was in the pocket. Decorum and attire for groom and best man. Are you a best man? No. Oh. So you're a... Uh... Not that it's any of my business. It's just that you meet somebody and it feels different, you know? And, and your mind gets racing, which is really stupid because, let's face it, no matter what kind of fantasies you have, that person is still a stranger if you've only known them for 
you know. And, and then I think to myself, Christ, if you want to live alone in the woods, then live alone in the woods. But if you don't, then... Objection! Irrelevant! Mr. Tuttle! I mean, argumentative. <laughs> Zoom's facts, not an evidence. Badgering! Definitely badgering. And Mr. Gibbs can tell right from wrong. Probably better than we can. Thank you, Dr. Stone, for finally clearing that up. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Do you wish to cross-examine Mr. Tuttle? No, sir. Does the defense wish to rest? Yep. Your Honor, may I have a moment to confer? Thank you. What are you selling me out? I've got no more witnesses. Put me on the stand. I'm going down. The least you can do is let me fight for myself. All right, what am I going to ask you? One question. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? How can you even ask me that? Mr. Gibbs. I do. Mr. Gibbs, uh, can you think of anything that might have contributed to your current condition? Condition? Your chemical dependency. No, I can't. You can't? <laughs> well, uh, there was a party one year out by the lake. Uh, is that what you mean? Yes, yes, that's it. Um, tell us about the party by the lake. I was six years old. It was October 31st. I was hungry. I didn't come from a wealthy family, if you know what I mean. So, October 31st. Oh, Halloween. Great. Yes, yes, Halloween, where you had your first sweets, where you had your first encounter with the sugar that would eventually enslave you. Hmm? Bleeding. <laughs> Sustained. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gibbs, tell us about that first Halloween. I was with my girlfriend, Nancy Newcomb. She was seven. And I was holding Mama's old pillowcase full of candy. I remember I was holding it when the pier collapsed, but I can't remember what happened to it afterwards. Isn't that funny? The pier? The... Yeah, that's where the party was. Lake Michigan froze over that year, bone-chilling cold. That's why, folks, our town isn't just a desert truck stop to me. It's the warm home I've always dreamed of. Objection! What is the relevance of this line of questioning? Uh, if you'll allow me some leeway, Your Honor, I'm sure it'll be clear very soon. I can hardly wait. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, uh, you were saying? About the party. Oh, yes, for all us kids at the orphanage. The orphanage? Our Lady of Detroit. The sisters gave a Halloween party out on the pier every year. I came dressed as a great pumpkin, but everybody called me Little Pumpkin. But it was so cold that particular year that one of the big boys, Eddie Rawlins and his pals, they built a fire, which got away from them, I guess, because that's when the pier caught fire and collapsed. We fell right through the ice into that freezing water. I helped the little kids struggle out, but those poor, cold little bunnies and angels, ah. Uh, it was a howling wind. Your Honor. Let him finish. Nancy ran up and gave me a hug and a kiss. She says, you're my hero, Ben Gibbs. You saved the little ones. But that made Eddie Rollins mad. He said, hero, heck, he's the one that started the fire. Then all his pals joined in. The pumpkin did it, little pumpkin. And then all the other kids turned on me. 
Somebody grabbed a handful of mud and said, hey, pumpkin boy, boom. By the time the sisters got there, I, I had mud up my nose, in my mouth, in my eyes. I couldn't see. I was on my knees. I was crying so hard. I, I, I just couldn't explain the truth. It, that's when they threw me out, right then and there. They threw you out of an orphanage. Well, by the time I got back, they had shut the gates, locked them, chained padlocks. There I was, my poor little hands freezing to those metal gates, my pumpkin suit whipping in the wind. I, Let me in, please. But that's when I, I caught a glimpse in the second story window, a glimpse of my only friend in the world, Nancy Newcomb. She was clean now, warm and dry. She was talking to a kind-looking man and woman. She was being adopted. I was so happy for her, because she was truly good. She said, bye, Benny. You're my hero. I'll always remember you. Look in our hiding place. I left something for you. Bye-bye. I never saw Nancy again, but in our secret hiding place. I found it. Tootsie Roll. She knew it was my favorite. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a penny. He sold pennies for $17.99. It's a penny. It's also an engraving. Order. Well, here's an engraving. You give me $17.99. Come on, give it to me. Ms. Gardner. Yes, here's another. Here's six, seven, eight engravings times $17.99. What is that? One forty-three ninety-two. You give me one forty-three ninety-two. Miss Gardner, control yourself. Me, me. Quiet. was quite a performance. Thanks. I feel so badly for that poor man. I mean, is there something I could do for him? Maybe give him my house or something? You wanted to see me? Right you are. Here, one year minimum security. I don't want to ever see this case again for the rest of my life. I don't understand. Oh, I'm sorry. I probably said it really fast. You win. And here's your plea bargain. Don't mention it. You want to have a drink? What? You know, like two warriors after the battle, toasting the effort. You want to? Where do you come from? Where do you want me to come from? Must be nice having so much in common with your client. You paying for this drink? I don't mind losing. I never mind losing. A case is a case. It's just that now I have to explain this to Mr. Parnell, and that's going to be hard. Well, who's Mr. Parnell? He's a man that went into business with Benny Gibbs. That's a sad story. Do you want to hear it? Sure. Well, he's this old man. He used to run his own business. It went belly up, but he managed to save a little cash for his old age. Gibbs finds him, shows him this big, fancy business plan, shows him how he's going to triple his money in six months, even if the business fails. Even if it fails. Yeah, so what happened? Never got a chance to fail. Gibbs skipped town with the money. Parnell lost his entire retirement account. 
Now he won't come out of his apartment. He won't testify because he doesn't want the whole world thinking he's some old fool. It's sad. Yeah, it is sad. It's sadder if it was true. What? You believed me. See how easy it is to win when you lie? Oh, you made that up. Every bit of it. Well, good for you. Well, at least I didn't do it on the stand. I didn't do it on the stand oh, either. Oh, right, right. Your client did. Big difference. Look, I didn't know the kids was lying. Not when I put him on. Well, no, you're a good lawyer. No paper trail, total deniability. That way you didn't put a perjured testimony on the stand. You don't care. It's all the same thing, right? Truth, lies, lies, truth. You're the most devastatingly handsome man I ever met. <laughs> You know, you really missed your calling. You should have been an actor. What kind of law do you practice? What? What is it? Is it a big firm, a small firm? What's it called? With Field and Morris, what do you mean that I should be an actor? You're amazing. You could have won an Oscar in there. Whitfield and Morris. I think I've heard of them. Are you a partner? I, I just, um... Just became partner? Well... Congratulations. So, what do you have? Big corner office? View of the city? Yeah, there's a view. Of course there is. Where did you go to law school? Yale. Yale? Well, there's a big deal. Oh, yeah. I have a big office, I have a big car, and a big... Uh... I'm big. I'll see you later. Yes, there really is a Mr. Barnett. bargain. One year minimum security. <sighs> Guy's an asshole, Charlie. I know. Do you know why he's an asshole? Because he's never taken responsibility for anything he's ever done. Because he's got a story for everything. And if the truth catches up to him, then hey, he just tells one more lie to stay ahead of it. Sound familiar? You're right. I'm an asshole. No, you're not. A... No, I'm the asshole. No, I'm an asshole. No, I'm. Why are you an asshole? Because you made me rent a tuxedo? Because in three days, I'm going to get married to a girl who... What is this? No, it's bourbon and Dr. Pepper. I guess we can get out of here now. Yeah, I guess we can. Well, that's good anyway. Yeah, that's great. I guess it turned out okay after all. Yep. Terrific.
listen, I want to tell you the truth. I've got to tell you the truth. Can I talk to you now? Please, can I talk to you? Tuttle, listen, I, I have to talk to hey, you. You're wet. Yeah. Well, I'm not who you think I am. Would you please leave? I'm going to bed. No, wait, wait, wait. Now, look, you wanted the truth, so I'm giving you the truth. I'm not Charlie Tuttle. I'm not a partner at Whitfield and Morris. I'm not even a lawyer. What? My name is Richard Rietti. You thought I was an actor because I am an actor. Well, no, that's not true either. Sometimes I'm an actor. When I get a part or I'm in a workshop or something. No, no. Fact is, I'm an actor. Whether I'm working or not, I'm an actor, and that's the truth. Wait. I lost this case to an actor? Well, I'm a pretty good actor. You said so yourself. Get out. Wait a minute. Now, you wanted the truth. This is a crime, Tuttle. I don't care. I'm a prosecutor. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm a prosecutor. Oh, my God, it's you. Hey. Get out. Oh, now. In the desert with your hair. It's not me. Of course it's you. Don't you look at me like that. That's it, Tuttle. You're in a lot of trouble. Get out of my house. Oh, you kissed me back. No, I did not. No, you did. I know you did. Bullshit. You kissed me back. You kissed me back. I know you kissed me back. Any way to welcome your beloved. Mm. Oh, you're wet. Uh, I, I fell in the pool. Oh. You know, I hung up the phone with you and I felt so distant and remote. Didn't you feel that way? I was in Nevada. I know. That's what I told myself. I said I, I can choose to stay here and turn into a righteous bitch. <laughs> <laughs> or I can choose to go to Nevada and, and get the attention I need. It's like Dr. Prostein said about taking responsibility for your circumstances. Right, right. I guess I just came here because I needed to hear that you love me. Do you love me? How can you even ask that question? Oh, I love you too. Mm. What are you doing? Injecting spontaneity. They say it doesn't have to be lost. You just have to plan ahead and make a little time for it in a busy schedule. Charles will be so romantic. You know, I ordered champagne and strawberries. You, you what? Well, they didn't have strawberries. Actually, he said the girl would bring seasonal fruit. <laughs> what, what girl? I know some waitress. No, 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 no wait, 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 wait a minute. Why, why don't, why don't, why don't you go to the bedroom and I'll be in in just a minute. Billy, hi. You are the greatest guy in the whole world. I love champagne. <gasps> I used to lie there in college and try and count all the bubbles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the extra whipped cream for? <laughs> you know, Hank kept wondering why I went through the whole fridge looking for a really cool bottle. He goes, Billy, what's the difference? I go, you know, Hank, I'm just trying to do my... my job. What's the fruit? <clears throat> Pardon? The seasonal fruit? <laughs> you speak English? Habla. Peaches. Oh, good, my faith. Come to bed, sweetie.
just listen. Guess you were the groom, hmm? Look, it's not a federal case. We saw each other, we liked each other, and it was nice. Really nice. It's just, it's, just, it's really complicated. No, it's not. And don't be a bridesmaid. I don't care what your base skin tone is. Mm. Big day, huh? Oh, yes. You got it all planned out? Well, I don't think that's going to be necessary. Morning, Counselor. Morning. Do you have a signed plea bargain? Or we can't dismiss. Plea bargain? What plea bargain? You win, Benny. One year minimum security. No way. We got these turkeys on the run. What? I'm not going to sign anything. I'm innocent. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. You screwed 65 people. I'll sign the damn thing. Court is in session. The Honorable Paul Z. Graff is presiding. They were legitimate. Business transactions. All right, on the record of the Gibbs matter, I understand we have a plea bargain to look forward to. No way. Uh, actually, Your Honor, my client has changed his mind. Why am I surprised? Pale of the jury, uh, are you prepared to close, Counselor? I think I'll waive my right to go first. I can't wait to hear what he has to say. Fine, fine. Are you prepared to close? Close? Your closing argument that does usually conclude these little festivities. Of course. the dress that bothers me is the whole question of friendship and i figure if she's willing to clash with the flowers and screw up my whole color palette then she's really not my friend to begin with <laughs> you hang on a second what uh ladies and gentlemen it's um kind of hard for me to know what to say here uh and what can be said about this man and everything he's done oh what can be said in his defense well, uh, he lied. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he lied. He took their money. That's true. But why did he lie? See, um, makes a person lie. Well, there's all kinds of reasons why people don't tell the truth. Um, uh, well, there's the sugar. Hmm? There's the years and years of candy. I mean, you heard all the testimony. You probably don't believe that, do you? No. See, I, I didn't think so. And there's the money, right? Yeah, he could have done it just for the money. But is that the only reason? See, I think maybe there's another reason, too. I think maybe he was lying to himself. Maybe he'd been lying for so long, it started to feel like he was telling the truth. I mean, maybe he's the person that he conned the most. I mean, we all do that, you know? I'll keep a little bit of ourselves hidden. Because if we didn't, well, then we'd have to look at who we are, who we really are. And if we didn't like it, well, we'd have nobody to blame but ourselves. So the question is, does this excuse Benny Gibbs? Well, that's up to you. Yeah. 
Olivia! How can you do this to me? Look, I wasn't being honest. Don't give me that shit! I have 300 people coming to Beverly Hills to kill! Who the hell am I supposed to marry now? Are you prepared to close, Ms. Gardner? Yes, I am, Your Honor. The defendant sold pennies for $17.99. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it appears that this case is almost over. Understand you have reached a verdict. We have, Your Honor. How do you find? We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Benjamin Gibbs, guilty as charged. Hallelujah. Nice job. Okay, I'll take the plea bargain. Hey, Liv, take him away. Oh, come on, Judge. A deal's a deal. Bye bye, pumpkin boy. <laughs> Just because I was five minutes late to the party. Court is adjourned. Nice clothes. So you're the lawyer. Wow. Yeah, I, I, look, I didn't want to lie. I mean, I, I didn't mean to lie. I didn't... You know how I said I got a flat tire on the way to school? Yeah. Well, I got it going the opposite direction. I flunked out, and I was on my way home. Didn't want to face my dad, so... You could have told me that. I just did. <laughs> huh? Huh? Well, <laughs> okay, okay. So it's not the most romantic present in the world. I know that. But my address is on the inside room. The sweetest gift I've ever gotten. Okay, yeah. All right. We should definitely slow down now, okay? Wait, no. Go, go, go faster. Whoa, okay, whoa. What am I supposed to hold on to? Not that. Well, I gotta hold on to something. It's dangerous. Turn me loose. Turn me loose, I say.